We want to begin tonight with the salvage operation underway in Baltimore as federal investigators start, pe start piercing together what may have caused that massive cargo ship to lose power before its catastrophic collision with the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Hazardous conditions from broken and twisted pieces of the bridge is forcing divers to pause their efforts to find construction workers who are missing. What became clear is the sheer magnitude of the work that lies ahead, not just to find the victims and clear the port, but to get one of America's busiest ports up and running again. Late this afternoon, the Biden administration approved $60 million in emergency funding to help cover the initial costs of debris removal. Governor Westmore warned residents of the long road ahead when it comes to rebuilding the bridge and returning the port to what it was. The NTSB says the investigation itself could take up to two years. CBS's Chris Van Cleve will start us off tonight with a first-hand look at the devastation. From the water, the scope of the accident is enormous. The cargo ship Dolly is almost as long as the Chrysler building in New York City is tall. The wreckage sits where it fell early Tuesday morning, blocking access to one of the nation's busiest ports. We're surveying the damage with the commander of the Army Corps of Engineers. The president called me yesterday and we spoke for a few minutes and he made it clear this was the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers' number one priority. Will this be an around-the-clock effort? We're going to go 24-7. That sounds like a massive effort. It is a massive effort. General Scott Spellman's team will work with crews from the Navy and Coast Guard to begin the salvage efforts to clear the waterway and allow divers to recover the remaining four bodies believed to be trapped beneath the rubble. It's not just all this debris that you can see in this massive cargo ship. It's also everything that's sunk to the bottom, tons of debris that's 50 feet down. It all has to come off the floor before this channel and the Port of Baltimore can reopen. Already, there is a traffic jam of cargo ships unable to get in or out of the port of Baltimore, plus two cruise ships that won't be able to return to the Charm City port that employs 8,000 people. This is a core economic engine for our state, and we have to make sure that our workers are protected. New video shows traffic early Tuesday morning on the Francis Scott Key Bridge and that construction crew filling potholes moments before the dolly slammed into it. And now, our first look on board the giant vessel as NTSB investigators work to gather evidence and continue interviews with the ship's 21-person crew. The Dolly's voice data recorder shows about 90 seconds after the first sign of trouble, the onboard pilot called for help, asking nearby tugboats to respond. Less than a minute later, the mayday call, then the devastating collision. The damage on board is extensive. Part of the bridge came down on the bow, leaving a deep gash. Cargo containers with hazardous material sit sheared open. When you get out here on the water and you look at that, you really get a sense for the massive effort that we're dealing with. And that effort requires clearing a 700-foot wide channel to get the port back open. The Navy is bringing in the largest floating crane on the East Coast. It'll be here tonight. It can lift up to 1,000 tons, but they think that piece of bridge laying on the ship weighs three or four times that, Nora. Wow. Chris Van Cleve, thank you.